but let's start. Um, my name is uh, Jock Komrink, as you can see there, and you're in the talk about what's all this fuss about common table expressions anyway, if you're not here for that. Yeah, you can, <laughs> ballroom. Um, yeah, I work for Quant Solutions, Quant Lacassi there, and that is me, that's my face, and my email. Um, that's the one I don't read, my work email, so you can send any requests there, so. <laughs> Cobus is not yet right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so yeah, I'm going to talk about common table expressions, or as it's known within the Postgres docs with queries, where common table expressions is actually within the parentheses clause. I didn't know that. So it's actually with queries and secondly, common table expressions. And um, this talk will be mostly beginner related to just explain like what is it at all and I think a lot of us have felt that way when, you st when I started at the company and I saw uh, the word with in a query, I didn't know what else was going on. I just re left it alone and re read the, le the, the rest. And if it didn't work, I didn't know what, that, what was happening. And this is to explain what, th what does that do and why you should use it. Um, and it's a great tool to, to do a lot of things. And um, yeah, we'll go through that step by step. And um, also, yeah, just it's not only for beginners. We'll at the end of this, we'll go um, get into some advanced stuff that you can do with um, with queries, with common table expressions. Uh, this uh, the common table expressions has been implemented since Postgres 8.4. Um, hasn't changed much since then, except now in Postgres 12, and we'll get there at the end. They've made some slight optimizations, which is actually good. Actually a great optimization. This is what I'll cover. Um, syntax, some basic syntax, just to show you, you know, what, is, what does Postgres what you want you to write where. Um, basic use. Then we'll cover some recursion CTEs. So that's where some of the cool, more advanced stuff comes in. Um, when or why not to use CTEs in some cases. and then some of that's not relevant anymore because of Postgres 12. But I know a lot of people don't go to 12 very soon if they're like us. Um, and then we'll do the, <laughs> yeah, the future, which is now Postgres 12. So, okay, before I show that query, no, shit, you've already seen it. <laughs> I know this happens a lot in a lot of companies where y you know you don't want to, but sometimes you, wrote, you write that functions or queries where you just end up using three or four left joins on subqueries, which has more left joins on it. And you don't have to have a lot before it gets out of hand. You only need, need like two or three, then it gets, then it gets terrible. And you, you can't read that, that stuff. I don't know if you agree with me or not, but you can't read what's going on. Your eyes are all over all the words. You have no control. You, you don't know what's joined with what, actually, because you have to read to the end of the subquery to find out, oh, here, here's the next thing starting. So, I mean, that stuff is terrible. And here I have a very small example. This came from our database, but I had to remove so much code to fit it on this slide. <laughs> like, I, it's not even half of it, but we have this one <laughs> thing that I just used as an example. I obviously renamed everything, and I saw this JSON build object, I doiki 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 it to, to name 100. There's not really 100 fields in there, but I mean, you catch the drift, and it's not easy to, to read, right? You, you don't know what's going on. It, there's so many words, <laughs> your eyes don't know what to do. And we're going to try and fix that. And here I have a little picture from, I don't know if you've watched Office Space. <laughs> And I mean, that's what happens without you even planning it. You'll, you'll just write all the queries at the same time. <laughs> so it's terrible. Um, and we're going to fix that. And it made me th think of a little quote. I don't know if you, if you can, can tell me what the end of that quote is. Punch in the face. Close. <laughs> is relational databases and saying goodbye to your pretty queries. So. It's, I mean, it's bad, but we're going to solve that today. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. Okay, so let's start with syntax, like how we're going to solve that, that thing. And I mean, this is basic syntax, and the Postgres docs actually 
They've been updated a few times through the versions. You can click once on the versions at the top, and you can see how, they, how, they, how they've updated it. And it's pretty great. A lot of syntax comes from there. I've just you know, used some of my own words to help the story along. And this is the basic thing. You will start it with the with word. And you'll give this subquery. I'm going to just use subquery and CTE interchangeably, because that's, at, at the end of the day, what, you wa what you're going to do. You're going to take a subquery put it in the CTE um, so that it's not there on the in, in line with the parent query and that you can read it better. Um, and that's not the only use, but it will cover the rest. And you'll give it a name, like something that you, you want to retrieve, and it will be a lot of data, and you'll give it a name, like um, all the users and their girlfriends and their dog's names. You will name the query that, and that's what you'll fetch in here, so that you don't have to fetch it later in the left join, if you understand what I'm saying. Then you can give, a, give um, column names, comma separated column name, name list if you want to. That's optional, and we'll, you'll see it in the examples. And you'll say as, and then you'll have a query. And that query then can be almost anything, and we'll get to that. And then you'll have the select or insert or update or delete query. After that, you'll, that statement will make use of that CTE. So let's start with the most basic one. With source as select one. And that subquery will return one, and you can use that subquery's result as a table. So select all from source will return, as you've guessed, one. And here I'm just showing you that that example is exactly the same as this example. So you won't, you won't somehow write this into that for kicks, there's no benefit to that. But just to show you, that's what the width, that's what the CTEs do. So you could have subqueried the select one, but normally it's not just the select one, as we know. <laughs> Lots of stuff gets added there because they want more and more data. The views aren't there, so you just build it in line. <laughs> with the common table expressions, you can rename it the, the columns within the subquery to anything you want, and that will return in there. Because let me just go back. You see here uh, it's returned the anonymous column. doesn't have any name. You can rename it as column one. It will return that. You can also, as we saw in the basic syntax screen in the beginning, uh, slide on the beginning, you can give it a name there. You don't have to do it there, like there. And then it's also column one. Then you can do this. You can rename it, rename it again, and rename it again there. <laughs> you have all the options. The power is in your hands with, with queries. And that will return call three. <laughs> so you start it out as nothing, then call one, and you bamboozle it all the way to call three. You can also return multiple columns, obviously, because otherwise this would not have been useful. So the select one don't get stuck on I only use select one, you can return anything. So there, multiple columns, anonymous again, my friend. And now, before we go on, if you don't understand what, hap what ha just happened there at all, you have to ask me <laughs> so that I can explain something, because now it's going gonna, it's gonna to get, get nasty. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions, explain some syntax or something, want me to go back to the slide? Great. Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> okay. So here is, so it's still not pretty, right? Because remember, this is not the plan. You don't want to write ugly code. But when you have to do that, do it this way rather than the subquery way. In this way, you can immediately focus your eyes down here. And that's a pretty query. And you can immediately see what's being joined to what with what conditions immediately. And then you can, when you want to know something, take your eyes above and figure out where did that thing come from? Like, I left you on a name table, but you can keep on reading and then later go to what is name table actually? What's, what's being returned in that table? So within that CT, what, what, is, what is coming back? And then, I mean, this just reads easier. So that's like the, the very first use for a CT on, in the docs and on almost on every tutorials page is readability of your views or your functions. So, yeah, and this just displays that. But, yeah, you still try not to do that, but, you know. 
You can also, so you don't only have to select within a CTE, you can do some insert and use the returning, the returning clause, um, and you know that will return something. So within the source table, what will it, would have been returned is all the values that's being inserted in this thing, and you can select from that source. Just know that yeah, this is happening. It's not, you're not selecting from it and nothing's happening. That inserts are happening and you will get the result. <coughs> Sometimes we do this, where you want to update something, where a lot of conditions, and then when, you've, when you're finished, you want to update something else, but only when it's relevant to the things you just updated. And this can accomplish that, so that's, that's nice. Um, you update that, you, you write the query there, and you write all your where conditions, lots of things, and you return the IDs of that, and then you update any other table that's relevant to that rows, and you can only update that. And this does that in one query, and it's nice. More readable than other ways and stuff. Do you want to take a picture? Uh, do it. <laughs> Be because you must write the things <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay. A little uh, example here. I made a little table, not everything is there, don't, don't get angry. This is sort of what the computer consists of, almost everything. And I, it's in one table, but it's easy, it's a part, and there's a sub part, and how many of that things would be in that thing, okay? Do you understand the table? So in a case, there's three fans, in a case, there's one motherboard, and then there at the bottom, you'll see like in a motherboard, there's one GPU, stuff like that. And what I want to achieve is something like this, like I want to ask what's all the parts that makes up the GPU. So what's all the parts the GPU consists of? And what the answer I got there is like the blade, memory, and fan. So you understand the GPU has memory, it has a fan, but the fan has blades, so the GPU has six blades and one fan. And that's the, ans that's the answer I want to get. And how would one get that answer from this table? I'm going to tell you, don't stress. Same for the motherboard, and then you'll get that answer. Do you guys understand the problem? We'll go to the solution. Recursive CTEs. I know. Here's some recursion memes. We have to go through them. <laughs> we don't have to vote now, but... Malcolm needs feedback on every speaker, and you can use this. <laughs> this, one, this one is my favorite, just so you know, if you haven't read it. <laughs> yeah, we can spend some time here. My talk is not that long. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I, I showed you the basic syntax in the beginning of the, of the screen, but I lied. So that's what I showed you, but in, in fact, there's a beautiful little thing there that you can write there with recursive and all the same things. And with that, you can do some pretty cool things. Let's go with that. The, yeah, okay, basic, basic syntax, you, the same as before, so with recursive, CTE name, I write there still source, and then you'll have your subquery, and your subquery basically has to have the same um, form every time. You will have a seed value, so select something, that's the start. Your union or union all that with a recursive um, statement. And the recursive statements, and that's where you can get all kinds of tricks. You can write crazy stuff in the recursive, I haven't, but you can, um, in that statement to build up this thing. And I'll, we'll get into how it works now. And your recursive statement is the one that should be referencing the CTE again. And after that, you'll say, okay, give me everything. And um, yeah, so, okay, let's, let me show you a quick example. Here I, w I said select one as, as n. And that's my seed value, so I'm starting with a 1. 
I'm saying union that with n plus one from source. And the Postgres docs has a nice little paragraph explaining very nicely of exactly what's happening in every step and what a recursive CT will do and when it will decide it's finished and stuff like that. And you need to understand that because this recursive CT will go into an infinite loop because I've given it no where condition or a limit to say when it should stop n plus one -ing for me. It will just n plus one forever. Um, so, okay, so let me just quickly explain how it works. That one will be taken and it will become the next value for this recursive source. So because I say a from source, so the one will be the first one for that. So it will say n plus one from source. And that n that it gets from source is one. And then next time it gets there, source is two. Because when the recursive function, sorry, when it, when it finishes, it takes the result and put, puts it back into source. So that the next time you ask for it, it's then, so it will be one, then two, then three. Um, and, and this will happen forever because I've, I haven't stopped it. So unless, unless you have like a, a, a statement timeout set, and I did that just to show you, that's the error message I got. I set the timeout of something I can't remember, and I just ran it, and then it, it, it killed itself because it will run forever. Now I'll put the where in there <coughs> to tell this recursive CET when to stop and give me the results. And I say there where n smaller than 10. And then I, if I run this, I get this. And it stopped the moment that n became 10. So you won't see the value 11 there. So n plus 1 would have been 10 plus 1 would have been 11, and it stopped right before that. Wait, OK. Does anyone have a question quickly about any syntax or whatever? Or do you understand? Quite, quite easy so far. OK, we're back to my computer parts. And this is how we're going to get the answer. Are you ready? Me too. OK. This example is almost exactly, I think, like that on the docs. But I went and made the table for that example to check if it really works. I don't trust, I don't trust them. <laughs> and it does work. So it's amazing. So this will literally say, select subpart, part, and quantity, every column, from parts where part equals something. And, the, and the, it's here where I will give it like, OK, motherboard or GPU. Give me, give me all the parts of GPU or motherboard. Union all that with select, OK, so here's P for, for parts, P subpart, P part, and P quantity, every column. From included parts, you will see included parts is the CTE name. So that's the back reference. You have to have that name in your recursive side of the statement below the union, seed value, recursive value. From included parts, comma parts, where p dot part is pr dot sub part. And that's how it gets every, gets every value until it's finished. I th don't think I've mentioned this. This will, that's why the where stopped the recursive function. The recursive CTE will stop when it, ha when it has no value to return. So that's the, that's the only condition it's, it's checking. That's why the where stopped it. So the condition is, I have no values to return after I've finished with, my, with the, this recursive statement, and then I'll stop. So the where in the previous one stopped it because it didn't return a value that time. So that's why you get 1 until 10. Then the where is like, I'm not returning this one. And then the CT is like, oh, it's not returning this time. I'm also then finished. So that's why. So the moment there's no more subparts for a part, the recursive, this recursive statement won't return anything, and that's when it will know it's finished that it's reached basically the bottom of the parts. And that's how you get this, this answer. If you put GPU in there, the, if you run this query on its own, it will only give you the two subparts that's linked to GPU. And then it will union all that with this recursive statement. And you can just see that then that will return the extra blade row for fan, because that's the only one that matches. And the next time it gets there, nothing will match. This, the recursive function finishes, and you're out. Motherboard will go one or more loops further until that finishes. There's no more supports for that part, and it will return. 
Any questions? I think that's my next slide. Yes. Go. No. Oh, no. Your air. I understand. My, is it my air? <laughs> okay. That's great. <laughs> okay. I have a disclaimer. I don't know why the green lines are there before the words. That's very weird. But it doesn't really matter. I think I told them to come after. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it afterwards, me and the lines. So, some stuff to note. You can't just always take any, any query or view you see, CTE everything and think you're going to fix it, although it's going to look prettier because there are some caveats. Postgres 12 sold some of them, but we're going to talk about it now. Um, when you do this, I made a table, I think, with a billion rows. No, a m million rows between 2 million and 3 million. That's what I did. It was funny. I al already made zero to million, something broke. Then I made million to two and something broke. I did that. Don't ask questions. <laughs> then I said, select all from Bigtable where ID is just one of them. And it took that amount of time. Then I was like, so you won't do this, but just to show you something. I made a CTE with the answer, and the subquery was select everything from big table, and then I was like at the bottom, select yeah, everything from the answer where ID equals that. And like it will give you exactly the same result, but it will take almost four times longer. In this case, if there were more columns or more data or something, it would yeah, stuff would happen. It this would break. Because what's happening here is that CTE is getting all the data. It doesn't care. It doesn't read this sentence and then know you want that. It gets all the data and then you're like, okay, now give me 250. So that, that, that is terrible. That CTE is basically being materialized, getting all the values. And Postgres also has no optimization on that. So it, it doesn't know that you're going to wear it now. And then after that, it's like wear that and then it's instant, but you already wasted a lot of time. So you won't do this, but just remember that when you have something to do and there's a where clause, move the where clause to within the CTE. And that will result in the same time. Because we've done it a few times where you put the where after the CTE and you don't know why it's slow. Now you know. So put the conditions that has to do with that direct table, big table, within the CTE and everything's fine. Now we're in the future. That's what I just said. Okay, Postgres below 12, CTEs were not optimized like at all. There was no going behind it or above it. You couldn't turn it on or off. It was just not optimized. If you had a CTE and you used that in a left join, that subquery would not have made part of the parent's query optimization plan. It would run on its own and the results will be, will be used in that left join, or join, or whatever. But now it has changed. From Postgres 12, so that's been launched like a five days ago or something. So we'll start using this maybe 2025. <laughs> <laughs> From Postgres 12, CTEs will be inlined. So by inlining, I mean you write the CTE, but Postgres is like, I know what you mean, and it takes it back to the unreadable. It takes it back there, but I mean, at least you can read it. We don't care what the planner does. <laughs> but it takes it back there, inlines it, and then it can use that together with the parent query and other joins to think about what you really want to do and optimize the hell out of it. If, almost missed it, and it's orange. I made it orange on a purpose. But it will do it by default if the worth query is non-recursive, so the recursive ones don't, don't try that, and side effect free, meaning, I think I put it here, yes. So, yeah, it must be side effect free. This means no inserts, updates, deletes, or volatile functions called by a select. So basically, it has to be a CTE with selects and no volatile functions. Also, the parent query must yeah, must reference the CTE just once for this to happen by default. You can override the default behavior, and here we are. By specifying, and that's in 12 now, 
by specifying materialized after the CTE name, or you can force the CTE to not be rolled, or to be rolled into parent query by, by specifying not materialized. So, so you can now go both, both ways. If you want the query optimizer to, to materialize it, you can specify it. If you don't want it to do, you can specify it. But the defaults you have, it will default depending on those conditions. And you'll just write it in there like you see that. So the normal one will look like that. You can now tell this, this query, this wouldn't make sense why we do that. I see now because the way clause is down there. But you can tell that CT to materialize no matter what. Like it shouldn't try and optimize it in 12 now. It should just materialize it. And there's some, re some reasons for this. Is if you have a CTE that, that you're going to use twice, uh, but then by default it won't do it anyway, so it's fine, yeah. Because then you want it to materialize once, do the things, and you use it twice. Otherwise, it will, it, if it's sub-queried, that will happen twice, the, the expensive select or something. But yeah, you can, you can say materialized and non-materialized in there. And I'm finished. Should I go back to the beginning? Do we want to see the memes again? <laughs> okay, but um, yeah, okay, so there you are. that was a quick talk, but um, yeah, I bargained on a lot of questions. Or does everyone just understand these things? Oh, thank you. Just quick. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so yeah, anyone, any questions that I can answer for you? Or maybe come back to you, maybe? I knew it was, yeah, I didn't stay hard enough. Okay. It's back on. Okay. So, yeah, any other questions from anyone? Maybe just comment? Yes. Okay, so, I adopted the convention where I start the comment table clauses. Uh, I name them with an underscore. So, if I read something lower, I know um, ah. this is a, not a table. This is one of those guys. Mm. And then for <laughs> the, I think what Postgres calls lateral joins, cross-join yes. laterals, I name them with double underscore. Okay. So when I look at the column name, I can see, okay, this comes from a table, this comes from a common table expression, this comes from a cross-join. Yeah. Um, it's to help me navigate, yeah. Yeah, the conventions within a development team at least is important no matter what you choose, but do, yeah, choose a convention and then stay with that so that other developers can read what you're doing. But we have queries like the one you see there at first, so. Yeah, and, and then another technique is to put a comma in front of the, double, the underscore name so that you can put a comment select there. So now if you have to debug something, you start at the top, you comment Oh, yeah, out. if you have multiple CTs, I also do that, yeah. yeah. And then you check in this part's all right, and then you comment it again, you jump to the next one, and you uncomment, and check this part is going to going wrong, then you know, oh, it's there. Yeah, if you start having a big query with like four or five CTEs, that becomes important because the last one breaks, and you don't know where the data went wrong. It happens a lot. So the, did I have any slide with multiple with clauses at all. What the hell? Who even am I? So, Hetak, English, please. <laughs> so let's just take like any with here. I don't know, I don't think I had. But you can comma after the, the second parenthesis and make another CTE. So, with lots of data coming back into a name, comma, with lots of other data coming back into the name, and later selecting from both of them. So, yeah, please, yeah. And the, the output from one CT can go into the next one? Yes. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can definitely, within the second one, use the first one. Definitely. Okay. No more questions? Maybe we have one. Sorry. Wait, you must wait for the <laughs> loud maker. But it's still not possible to uh, nest them inside each other. You can yeah. nest. So I can. <coughs> let's, uh, let's say the select all from big table was not a simple query like that. And it was, on, on its turn, again, a difficult thing. You can with there again and select with. Yeah, it can do that. So 
So let's, okay, wait, wait. We have to do it. Where is that thing we have? Okay, we have a thing here, but okay, it's not going to happen. But I, yes, I, I have an example of two words, you see. Okay, there's table and you use them both. I can, if this was more of a mess, I can go in here and have a small little CTE there again. So, yeah, as much as you want. It's Christmas. <laughs> okay. Everyone good? <laughs>